Okay. Well, what surprises we got waiting for us today? Doesn't look like too much. I was out here with the old draw knife all that, all not that long ago. Dakota's got something on the go. Anyways, looks like the sawmill's all ready to rock here. Last time I was out here, I disconnected this in hopes of this uh, having residual water drain out. I don't know if it did or not. It doesn't really matter. We're not using lubrication. Got a bit of ice down here. Other than that, I think we're all right. These logs are froze solid. That's okay. <laughs> I was just about to fire this thing up and I thought to myself, you know what, I should probably look a bit closer in here because I always talk about this thing running so good. Well, there's a reason it runs so good. It's because I maintain it. Now, one thing I should do and I'm going to do before I fire it up is just have a bit of a closer look. It's probably a good idea I had a closer look because I'm noticing this belt here is starting to wear. And if you guys wanted to see what a belt looks like that starts to wear, look in between each of these teeth, these rubber teeth, especially right here where it goes over this idler wheel. See how those cracks are starting to open up? So that's showing that this belt is wearing. So if you're going to prematurely replace it, uh, well, I guess replace it before it breaks, this would be the time to do it. Another thing I'm going to do is you'll notice, you guys see right in there, See on the top of the belt, remember the blade right here has to ride along the top of this belt up along this wheel. If you have some debris here, which I happen to, in the form of like uh, caked on dust, that dust should come off there. Because if you don't take that off there, it's going to create a bit of a slippery surface. Then you're going to have the blade riding on a slippery surface. And last thing you want is this blade coming off. And so I like to uh, just put something up against it and see what I'm doing here. You can uh, you can manually turn the blade. And just before I get carried away here, it's always best to take the tension off the blade. Okay, so I took the tension off there. That way uh, I I'm not gonna have the blade under tension pop off and hit me. Uh, another thing you could do is sort of position this so you got a bit of a barrier between yourself and the and the blade if it does pop off but uh, just for ease of view you guys can sort of see what I'm doing here I'm just gonna rotate it by hand and look at all that caked on sawdust that's coming off and as you can see there notice how it was under it was uh, not tensioned while it popped off but when it's not under tension it's not very uh, you know it's not very um, not very What's the word I'm looking for? I can't talk today. Koda, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, he doesn't know either. It's not very um, catastrophic, I guess. It just popped off. It can stay there until I'm done. Probably safer that way anyways. Many of you are probably yelling at your computer screen or phone as you're watching this saying, take the blade off. Probably right. You probably should take the blade off before you do this. I've also been known to just take a little bit of sandpaper and I'm not trying to take material off, but I'm just trying to take off the caked on sawdust here. Okay. So I do that on the belt after checking the belt. The other thing I got to do here is clean off the, clean off the, I don't know what this is actually made out of. Uh, some of you at home probably know, I can't remember some sort of polymer material. This, uh, 
this uh, orange piece here. I, I like to clean off the sawdust on this as well. And uh, what that'll do is the same thing as the other side. It will make it so the blade can't slip off. So I just use a screwdriver and clean off one groove at a time. Let's clean that one off. And you can see here, even though I thought I cleaned it off half decently, there was still a fair bit of material on there. And uh, stop that and the screwdriver takes it off there nice. All right, so that's pretty good. So that's the uh, two things I did there. Other than that, what I'm gonna do, let's get all this dust out of here. And some of you have told me you actually put holes on this side as well, which is kind of a neat idea because I do get the accumulation of sawdust right there. Some people say they put a, uh, put a pail over here as well. I saw a guy, I don't know who it was, but uh, he just put a pull, he put a bolt. So he, uh, he, he threaded a bolt into here so it stuck out a little bit. And then he hung a five gallon pail just underneath of this. Obviously in my case, it won't work, but his was up off the ground. And then all the sawdust that fell out of there went right into the pail. So kind of a neat idea. But as you can see, that's caked on pretty good there. All right. I like to want them down here as well. I have a look at these and I'm looking at this one in particular. This one is sort of cockeyed a little bit, so it, it, it's not gonna wear evenly. So this would be the time that I, uh, I re reposition that. And you can, actually, um, you can actually loosen off on the back here, right on the far side. You guys probably can't see it, but on the back there, there's a bolt. Loosen it off and then you can reposition it so it's level, making sure it's the same level as this one. Anyways, that's about it for me. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna make a decision here, either change the belt or not, but I'm gonna cut the camera there and you guys can decide whether I did or not. Thank you.